given us all tips and ideas for how to be better at our jobs, to be better parents, to be better in our homes, better with all the children that we work with. I'm sure you all agree. Can we have a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. And uh, thank you, Anjum, for your really very info informative lecture on laws of nature. You see, laws of nature is very detailed. If you talk on laws of nature, you will continue talking, continue talking. You can't stop. But the summary which uh, the Anjum has uh, explained you, it is worth to understand it. And related to that, you must go through Montessori's books. This is a, a real worthy literature which Dr. Barney Montessori has given to this world. You see, you, you spend time reading newspapers, you spend time reading magazines, you spend time spending time with the mobiles, you're spending time on different activities. But uh, being a Montessorian, for example, let me just give you my example. I never sleep before 2.30. This is my lifetime uh, sort of uh, <coughs> habit. And I spend at least, at least one hour reading Monastery literature. This is my routine. And the reason is that because, you see, we have certain responsibility as you people have certain responsibility. You are taking care of the child, the children. Unless until you are not equipped with the whole knowledge of the child, how you can perform your Responsibilities, you can't. This is this is what, in fact, uh, uh, we are trying to emphasize that whatever you do, whether you are Montessorian or not Montessorian, when you are you are on the job, especially with small kids, then uh, you must try to know what is the sign. For example, 27 years back, when I was I was having nothing uh, knowledge about uh, education, when I thought what to do, I wanted to start a school. I said, what to do? Then I surveyed different systems, studied different systems, and it took me about five, six months to decide what has to be done. So, in the end, I end up with the Montessori. The two basic things which I learned that the Montessori directress, the teacher in the school are equipped with two things. One, they are equipped with the, the, uh, the child psychology and the second thing, they know how to keep child busy with the system which Dr. Bari Montessori had. I, I like the, the toys, I like these materials. I like that material, really. But I, when I saw them and I just uh, uh, thought of and uh, uh, noted that these materials is a scientific material which has lots of things in that. The spindle box is not only a spindle box. It has a whole science in it. The pink tower is not a pink tower, the piece of wood. It has whole science in it. It has whole Montessori knowledge in it. And you can imagine that the Montessori material throughout the world is same. Is same. 
Why is it same? Hundred years gone. Why is it same? Because the base is the science, the laws of nature, and which Dr. Maria Montessori has studied in depth. She was a scientist, and she was a physician, medical doctor. She knows the inside of the human being. She knows the function of every part of the body. And she knew that if to control this entity, you have to have a knowledge. You have to have a scientific background. So on the basis of that, she came up with the whole system. And you will be amazed that in 52 she studied a child. 52 years. 52 years. It had a lot of time. And she said, she always said, the child has taught us. Well, uh, 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 as I told you, I'm very much inspired by the lady, and, and uh, I love that lady in depth. <coughs> so this is this is what, in fact, the whole system is. Irrespective, for example, in my country, especially in the largest city, is the second largest city in the world. That is Karachi, if you ever heard. Its population is 250 million. And in that 250 million populated city, all the schools in Karachi are having 70 to 80 percent are teachers, are trained teachers. Could it be amazed? 70 to 80 percent. One time I visited one, uh, one school in, in Karachi and I said I wanted to uh, uh, get admitted by uh, uh, granddaughter. She was going to be two, uh, two and a half years. I went there and I, I wanted to meet the principal and they very reluctantly said, okay, yes, you can, you can meet. I went there, I had a talk with the, with the lady for 40, 45 minutes. And during that talk I said, do you have a, a, a trained teacher, trained directress? And you know what she said? That big chain of a school, city school, you might have heard, city school, and big houses, they are there, they are in, 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 in other part of the world as well. You know what she said? With very proud sort of tone, yes, there were 11 environments, pre school environment, two, two and a half years to six years. She very proudly said, yes, we have two AMIs and nine LMIs. LMI means our London Monastery International. I said, okay. Can I see any of your class, please? She said, yes. She took me to the class and uh, the class door was open and when I, uh, when I went towards that, the teacher who was teaching, you know, she saw me from there. And from there she said, Sir, Samaniku. And that, that principal who was with me, she was surprised. Why that lady has said to me, Slamali. Then, not me, that lady, that teacher said, He is our sir. Then he said, she said, Mr. Shami, you didn't tell me that. I said, uh, Well, uh, I, I, I thought that we just be uh, just a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I didn't tell her anything about that. Then she was uh, uh, very happy that yes. So very proudly she was saying nine out of eleven there were nine teachers of our trade, our trade teacher. You can imagine this is this is the services which we have done in twenty seven years. And impresses. You see, I I'm very strict. I'm very. It's about fifteen hundred 
1500 uh, teachers who are getting training. Every, every time you find 1500 teachers uh, uh, being trained by more than 20 AMI experts. And uh, I'm very strict, strict on, on, on my experts. These ladies, she is with me for like 17 years. And uh, I'm very strict to tell her. You, tell, you just ask her. She will tell yes. And I do not, I do not want them to deviate from uh, this system, not at all, for any reason. And uh, all experts, and they study, they regularly do the, for example, as I said, today there is a conference in uh, Sheridan, Karachi. And uh, uh, my experts are there, they are delivering. They are, in fact, trained, would you believe it? They are, these trained AMIs have been trained by me in 27 years and many of them are working 70, 20, 20 years to make them to make them a professional teacher. What should be the could be the other expert of the Montessori? There are lots of people expert in Montessori, but how to function? That is important. And uh, why, how it came, because I'm basically an engineer, so I used to train engineers. So the training part, training, the human being involved in that, training, passing on information, getting them acquainted with the knowledge, getting them acquainted with the machinery, whatever they are uh, that. So that work. And by the grace of Almighty God, London Monastery is really a big organization, and now we are uh, operating in other countries. <coughs> and uh, 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 with the time, in fact, uh, my function is basically to do the conference, get them went with the, with the London Monastery, and then wherever we will feel, we'll uh, open branches there. We have already uh, done it in Sri Lanka. This sort of work has been done. They have started a, a 50 days a workshop. It's still going on 50 days workshop there in Sri Lanka. So this is what, uh, in fact, uh, we are trying to say, trying to do. And God is with us. I tell you. I tell you, God is with me. I do not want anything from the God. I want that this system should go from country to country. I don't worry about, would you, would you believe it? I don't worry about money. I don't worry about money. I don't worry about money. This is not my job, this is God's job. If you want to get the job done, He has to provide me the money. And He's provided. I never know how it's been done. It's a very expensive matter, I tell you. Very expensive. And done. Is done and it will continue to be doing in different countries. I think uh, it is uh, 11. So, um, I think we are ready for the first coffee break. We have three stations outside. You can help yourself to some coffee. And after that, we'll have our first round of breakout sessions. Just to remind you, breakout session uh, that Lavender 3 will have all the presentations. Uh, Ms. Uh, Andrew Makar will be there presenting Practical Life. In this section, we'll have Aisha Abdullah with The Power of Words. And in this room, we have Ms. Arti Nandi Kumar with The Absorbent Mind and Conscious Worker. So just to help you find your way after the break, enjoy your coffee, and we'll see you shortly. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 30, so let's start with the dot. Okay. I uh, hope you enjoyed um, Ms. Anjum's lecture just now. I really did. I think she deserves an award for someone to speak non stop for an hour and captivate an audience. Alhamdulillah. So, today, what I'm going to talk about is the influence of words on children, uh, their feelings, and impact on their emotional development. Now, uh, Ms. Andrew talked about the laws of nature. So the law of nature that happened in the past few days is that my laptop decided to freeze. 
and my presentation. It will not be um, your abstract ability to visualize it in your mind. Because that's what the children do. Okay? From concrete to abstract, there is, an, there is a presentation there. Um, today or tomorrow, I think. So, um, and then also the National Law of Order, a sale of 50% for bags, so we, <laughs> and shoes, so we spend time there. Wonderful, Jakarta. I uh, spend more time here for shopping. And uh, I really enjoyed ourselves, and I, I, I thought about it, and I said, okay, that's all right, because what some of you here, I think some of you are Montessori practitioners, yes, working in a school with diploma already, yes, here we have a child hands, don't we? Hello, Yes, don't be, yes, wonderful. One, two, three, don't be shy. Hello. Wonderful. Four, five. Okay, Montessori is a very modest people. Okay, they are very Hello. low profile. They don't want to uh, show off, which is what Maria Montessori herself wanted to do. She didn't want her name to be out there. Okay? She wanted every child to be have, to have access to it, so that's why her name wasn't patented. Okay, because all children are impressionable. All of them are vulnerable. They cannot speak like us. They cannot vote for parliament. They have no real say. We have to be their advocates. It's absolute need. That's so much so that the needs of children are so badly overlooked with the cases of abuse, exploitation and all that, that they have become rights. United Nations of the Child, of, uh, United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children, of which Jakarta is also a signatory too. So you, by virtue of being in Jakarta, whether you're Indonesian or not, and working with children, you have to represent Jakarta as a, pres as a promise to the whole world that you will look after the children and see to their needs, which have become rights, like your human rights. So children themselves also have to um, have these rights. <coughs> so words, of course, have an impact on them. Even if you don't have a word with them, if they are doing something and you don't want them to do and you just look at them, look at you, and that's an impact, right? <laughs> you will feel uneasy or something like that. Or even actions. Or lack of actions. Anything else? Calm. Calm. Okay, the child should be quiet. Okay, so this is the, the state that the child should be in. Okay. So, in order for the child to be in that state so that he or she will uh, upset and you want the child to listen to your advice, okay? And you say, so I know it, good idea. Keep talking, talking until the child doesn't have any more to say. You say, 